Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about a debate that started three years ago on whether you should use controllers or minimal APIs in .NET. Now controllers have been around for a very long time because we kind of ripped off Ruby and created MVC out of what Ruby on Rails was and later in 2021 with the release of .NET 9 we copy inspired uh, by Node.js and the whole Python thing and we added minimal APIs in .NET with .NET 6. Now this video won't explain what controllers and minimal APIs are, I have plenty of videos explaining both concepts. In this video I'm going to talk about this post that appeared on Reddit yesterday where people commented what they're choosing and why and I'm going to give you my opinion on it as well. Now in case you don't know I was a big advocate of minimal APIs from the very beginning, in fact I have multiple talks and multiple videos on that topic, you can check them out to see my in-depth opinion and what I thought when they first launched and how it has evolved over the years. I'm very much a big advocate of them. I think that's how you should be building APIs and that's how I'm building APIs. Dome Train is built with minimal APIs, but they also do understand the feedback that, hey, we've always been doing controllers. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with them. They work fine. Why should we move? So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the comments and give you my opinion on it. Now, I do want you to pause this video and write down in the comments down below what you are using and why so more people can see and we can have a healthy discussion over what you're choosing and why. Welcome back. So let's take a look at what we have here. Controllers versus minimal APIs. Which do you prefer and why? When developing APIs in .NET, do you prefer using traditional controllers or the newer minimal APIs approach? Could you share the reasoning behind the preference and any specific scenarios where you choose one over the other? Now, traditionally, the biggest criticism of minimal APIs was that they're here just so you can make quick proof of concepts and attract a younger audience back into .NET because controllers have been a bit of a dinosaur-like feature. Nobody is really doing controllers anymore in modern development. And that can be fair criticism, but I think the biggest issue with them is minimal APIs are so open that many people don't want to think on how they can organize them. The more you start adding things like solid, kiss, yagni, and dry, you actually find out that minimal APIs can be a thinner version of controllers and a more manageable version. But let's take a look at what the comments have to say. So I use traditional controllers because that's what I'm familiar with. Very fair point. If you just are happy with what you're using, you don't necessarily need to change it. Now, if I add all my endpoints in one extension method, why not just use a controller? I only see minimal APIs as beneficial if you have an app that will only have one or two controllers and probably fewer than half a dozen routes. And many likes on this post. In fact, this is the most liked comment on this post. And I fundamentally disagree because using minimal APIs doesn't mean that you have to have everything inside the single extension method. Minimal APIs gives you the tool to choose how you want to organize your endpoints. If you're happy with how controllers work, fine. That's a perfectly fine default way to organize your API. But if you want more control, you want to do more dynamic stuff, then minimal APIs gives you that control and they're faster. Now, a comment here is that Microsoft uh, examples show a very simplistic manner and they can understand the frustration. There's no requirement to put everything in one file. And that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. In fact, with minimal APIs, you're encouraged to split more and have, in many cases, one file per endpoint, one class per endpoint. And the benefit of this is that if you're injecting something in the controller, let's say it's a service, let's say it's a database connection, let's say it's anything, this thing is injected for the activation of any of those methods. But you might not be using something for every single method. So what if you have something that's only injected for a single method? Well, you can say you can use the from service attribute and only inject it there but nobody's doing this. Minimal APIs gives you this ability by default where you only inject things when they're needed. That's a massive, massive advantage. It just leads to better code in my opinion. And another comment that's very true is minimal APIs are faster and more lightweight than controllers. That's because they were just made from scratch to be that. They're not an afterthought after the MVC thing wasn't that popular anymore, but we have controllers and we can route requests. Why don't we just do that? it leads or it can lead to faster, lightweight and cleaner code. Now, the next thing is I'm yet to understand how auth filters work with minimal APIs. So sticking to controllers for now. Auth is an issue in .NET in general and the team knows it. In fact, they're adding a few endpoints and I think they've added them already actually to simplify how we're doing auth in .NET, but it always has been an issue and I don't think it's getting any simpler anytime soon. Auth is a very complicated thing, now, I think this person is exaggerating. It's not that complex to figure out how auth filters work. In fact, the more you look into them, you'll figure out that controllers are weird in that term. Minimal APIs are way more explicit. 
Another comment is minimal for proof of concept and traditional for actual solutions. Again, I disagree with that, but I can't totally get behind that point because at least they give you an easier way to hit the ground running and start building the API you want. Everyone that uses minimal APIs for anything other than a short demo will eventually build stuff that reinvents controllers. I have to take a step back here and, and say, okay, yeah, that can be true, but it's most likely you're gonna implement the Reaper pattern, not MVC or not controllers. Controllers is just one aspect of MVC. And it's not the beginning where you just take a step back and you just end up there again. It is the outcome of another architecture. So I don't think you should even compare them as something that can happen if you just want to organize minimal APIs in the same way as controllers. They're fundamentally different behind the scenes and you should take that into account. And in many ways, this is true because there's libraries like Fast Endpoints, for example, which is something I use too, which allows you to create an endpoint class and then have an endpoint and handle it like this, where you have your request, your response, you specify how you want to handle it, and then you build a very minimalistic API that has endpoints looking like this. And I think it's a great design. Why would I have all of my endpoints in a single class I can just split them in their respective class. And if I want to edit this specific endpoint, I only have to change a single class, both single responsibility and open close. In many ways, it is how we should be building things. And if what we end up with is something that looks like controllers, remember that controllers was never the starting point. It was the end point of another architecture. Controllers, minimal APIs are a movement against Hello World in Node and Python frameworks that aren't anywhere in the same performance ballpark. And as soon as one moves beyond Hello World, the outcome is in-house implementations of controllers anyway. So same thing as before, but the thing is, Node and Python are extremely like more popular uh, frameworks and languages than C Sharp. Like it's not even close. You have to remember that controllers is not a thing that people are used to see in other languages and other frameworks. So if you want to attract more Node developers, more Python developers, you bring them in and they can give structure to their APIs the way they want, the way they're used to. Minimal APIs is probably the most important feature that .NET had in many, many, many years. You can choose to stick with controllers and say that if whatever you implement will be an in-house implementation of controllers, but controllers are very archaic, and whenever I see them, I just it just screams legacy to me. I know, of course, that this is not true, but just how it feels, and the more you get exposed to other languages and frameworks like I am, the more you see it. It just looks very, very weird. In many ways, things like DDD architecture and vertical slices, all of those things look very weird. Like in .NET, we have a big fetish with structure and we just want to give like frameworks and sizes and shapes to everything. The more you box things in a specific package, the less innovation you have in a framework. And that's why I think Node and Python are way more popular because they don't have that box to even be within. Now this one, minimal APIs, but better, fast endpoints, great project as well. And even our Dali, Steve Smith, has talked about this for many, many years. And I'm pretty sure he has his own solution as well, where he uses the controller base and then he makes single endpoint controllers, effectively implementing the Reaper pattern, this one over here. I've talked about this many, many times in my channel. Uh, it's called API Endpoints, the project. And it's a, it's a lovely project. I do personally prefer the Fast Endpoints project, but the idea is the same. And of course, there's way, way more controller code than minimal API code. When you go into a job, you're more likely to be expected to know controllers than minimal APIs. So you should absolutely know both, which is why on Dome Train, I'm also teaching both. The REST API course shows both. And of course, the minimal API course shows minimal APIs. And there's been so many improvements throughout the years on minimal APIs that they make them very easy to get started and structure as well. I go with controllers every time, even if it's just one endpoint with one function, I just like the tidiness of them separated like that. Well, then you would like the tidiness of having one class per endpoint with one function over controllers, because why would you bloat your controllers with things that they probably don't even need? If I look at projects with controllers, I can guarantee you that, that some of those things don't need to be in that controller. You're just doing your code a disservice. And then the rest of the comments are basically repeating themselves. So the picture is pretty clear. People tend to lean more towards controllers than minimal APIs. But the more I talk to people and the more actually I make videos where I show controllers of minimal APIs, my audience is very much you should be using minimal APIs. What is this example? So we've definitely come a long way and I see way, way more adoption. But now one from you. What are you choosing? Did you leave that comment? And if you haven't, please do. And let us know which team are you playing for because I'm really, really curious to see how the audience will be split. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.